Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Chad Alvin, as was mentioned, and I'm an associate professor at North Dakota State University, as well as the chief technology officer of a spin-out company called C2 Renew. And today, I'm going to talk to you about searching for a better future through sustainable materials. And what do I mean by that? Sustainability is one of those uh, terms that really it's hard to nail down, it's hard to pin down, much like green. You've heard the term green used a lot. Well, what does green mean? You know, somebody improves their, their furnace at home and it's more energy efficient. Some would argue, that's green. Uh, others would say, well, this bag that I picked up at the grocery store, it's made from corn and it'll break down easier out in the landfill. That's green. You know, and then others are like, I just painted my wall green. That's, <laughs> that's green. But the term sustainability is one, again, that's very much the same on the same lines. It's very hard to pin down exactly what it means. Uh, but in its very basic definition, what is sustainable? It's something that lasts. Something that's unsustainable, unsustainable won't, right? It'll die. So let's look at these two images, all right? What comes to mind when you're talking about sustainability? Which one is more sustainable from a trans? transportation standpoint. You look at the train full of people. I would argue that is one of the most energy efficient ways to transport people across the country than anything else. Less materials used, less pollution, less energy to propel that many people across the country. However, is it sustainable? Is it safe? No. Is it lawful? Not in most countries. Those are the things we have to start thinking about when we look at each and every product and uh, technology. Now take, for instance, on the other, the other image, this freeway. Very common to look at something like this. Is this sustainable? This is certainly safe. It's legal if you maintain the right speed limit. But from an energy perspective, it's very, it's very prohibitive in terms of the amount of energy we use. It's very luxurious that all of us can sit in one vehicle and drive from point A to point B. Look at the infrastructure. There's so much road that is needed and constantly needs to be repaired. Is this sustainable? And a lot of uh, automotive manufacturers are starting to argue that it's not sustainable. We need to do something different. And so I borrowed this plot from author uh, Michael Ashby. And it's very nice to explain how sustainability works and what truly is sustainable out in society in terms of materials or technology. You have to consider the three capitals of prosperity, people, and planet. And what do I mean about those? Planet is one of those that's pretty, should be obvious. Those are our natural resources. Whether we mine them from the earth to build things, whether we grow them and they're rapidly renewable, much like the agriculture that's out our backyard. Um, and so that's pretty clear. From a human and societal capital, that one confuses a little, a little bit. Here we're talking about, do people, are they paid well for their jobs? Are they given proper training in their jobs so that they feel fulfilled when they're working their jobs day in and day out? Is their job such that they can maintain a family in a, in a nice and easy way? Those are the human and societal capitals. And then you have your manufactured and your financial capitals, which are pretty clear. That's the bottom line, right? Is what you're doing profitable? Are you making money at it, okay? And it's only when you can intersect these three capitals of people, prosperity, and planet that you truly can achieve something that's sustainable. And so we have to stop you know, commending companies that have a great bottom line and we have to start thinking about those companies that have a great bottom line and they have great environmental and societal impacts with their technology. Because oftentimes, we can abuse this. You know, we can have the uh, best uh, ideas or best intentions, but sometimes they fail. Take bamboo flooring, for instance. Bamboo shoots out of the ground real fast. We can take it, we can harvest it, we can build uh, flooring, furniture, in a very fast, rapidly growing, renewable way, okay? But then look at the harvesting practices that are going on in Indonesia and throughout Asia. The, uh, 
the working environment there is, is very taxing on those people. And so it's not meeting that societal capital, okay? Same thing with being recycle, you know, recyclability, ingraining that into your company. I totally agree, I love recycling, I do it every chance I get. However, there's a consequence there too. If you're just constantly recycling the same things, what happens when you have a new and innovative material? You're gonna be blind to it because you're not gonna, you're not gonna stray from your recycling, okay? And so you gotta have a happy balance there in order to truly be sustainable yet carry technology forward. One other thing we really suffer from uh, in the marketplace is greenwashing. You see these green labels on just about anything that has anything to do with bio-based. But what is bio-based versus biodegradable or compostable? What does that mean? And I think we've created a lot of confusion out in the marketplace because of the way that these labels are not regulated. A lot of them are just flat out made up to make it, their product look green but some are certified and some are starting to gain more traction in terms of uh, uh, certification. So what does it mean to be biodegradable? Well, just because something is bio-based doesn't mean it's biodegradable. And something that's biodegradable doesn't necessarily mean it's bio-based. You can have petrochemicals that made from oil that break down and they're biodegradable. It just means they have to break down by a living organism, okay? Whereas your uh, uh, bio-based materials, those are gonna come from something that's either ag or forestry, renewable-based, or some other biological product, okay? And that's the main difference. Now with me and my research over the past 10 years at North Dakota State University, I've worked with several colleagues and we have our Center for Sustainable Material Science. And for the longest time, the past three decades, a lot of effort has gone into taking something like a vegetable oil or a protein and trying to make something that looks exactly like a petrochemical or something that looks exactly like a synthetic and seeing how it performs. That's been a great downfall over the past three decades. Instead, what my group is doing and what we've been doing with our technology is we've been looking at what does nature give us in terms of chemical structure, chemical makeup. I specifically look at flax fiber, hemp fiber, Canaf, jute, and I look at it and I say, how can we enhance its properties? How can we take this fiber and create an advanced material out of it, knowing what it is, but it's not necessarily gonna look like this synthetic that we know and we've been working with year after year after year. And so that's the main difference, main driver for me and my group is to advance bio-based materials for the next generation. And then within my company, my spin-out company, C2 Renew, we like to take a lot of this technology and develop unique materials uh, that creates a message for that customer, okay? And so a lot of times we try and work with companies to develop products that scream green. We always say that. We're trying to make a product that screams green. And we've worked with toothbrush manufacturers, uh, rodent repellent enclosures, We've worked with ag manufacturers. We've worked with uh, various different companies to develop materials that create a message. And they have to perform. That's the next thing, is that a lot of the bio-based technology out, of the, out there doesn't necessarily perform up to my standards and a lot of other people's standards. And so that's what we have to be careful about as well. The technology is there. It just, you have to push it. And that's what's led us to 3D printing. And what was mentioned earlier is that one way we've been trying to uh, develop new ideas and create new innovations out of bio-based materials is by creating 3D printer filaments. And if you're not familiar with 3D printing, what it is is it's constructing materials layer by layer by layer until you build a final product, which is very different than subtractive manufacturing, which most of you might be familiar with, taking a block of material and carving out everything until you have your final product. And we've had a lot of fun with this because it's inspired a lot of innovation. And we've worked with a company, 3DOM Fuel, that has allowed us to take some of our material innovations and create these 3D printer filaments. And for one is this coffee cup we made from coffee. And so <laughs> you're only limited by your imagination. And that's what we keep on telling uh, each and every one of our staff is that we can do this out of anything. 
And right now we have a filament out of coffee, a filament out of hemp, and a filament out of beer. And I, in speaking with my business partner, I said, if we can create a coffee where I can utilize two of my favorite inputs, beer and coffee, I'm with you, I'm sold. <laughs> and so I encourage you, I encourage you to think about what is sustainable. Search for those sustainable products that really work, okay? Nothing annoys me more than going to the supermarket, uh, buying a toilet bowl cleaner that says this is bio-based, going home and using it, and it doesn't work. What's the point? They got to work, and you got to push those manufacturers because the technology is there. We're doing it, and others can too, is that they work. And until we start utilizing bio-based materials that work and go beyond what we know with our petrochemicals, uh, that's when we're going to have a sustainable future and a better future. And then also I want to encourage everybody to push for better labeling. You know, We got to have those lab labels that are clear. What is bio-based? What is biodegradable? What is compostable? And have it certified. Have it actually mean something. Okay? And so... I just encourage you to keep searching for those biodegradable materials, those bio-based materials that are truly sustainable. And I thank you for your time.